And we want to invite you this afternoon, if you're within the sound of my voice, I want to let you know that there is a God in heaven that is real. His name is Jesus. Yes. And he came and he died for you and me. And I want to let you know that God is good and God can heal your life. God can heal your addiction. God can, uh, can heal the wounds that life has caused you. I want to tell you that God is great and he's worthy to be praised. And I want to just welcome you out this afternoon. We're going to have a concert here where we have these uh, tinted shade, the, the, the little canopies up. Come over. Uh, we love to have you. Um, and we just want to bless you and let you know that God is real. We're going to do a few songs for you this afternoon. that real clear all the way down to the liquor store I mean perfectly clear Amen. 
So we're setting up for our next song. We're just doing a little tuning. But man, it just feels so good out here. You know, the sun doesn't feel that good after a while, but it feels good to be here right now and to just talk about God. You know, you don't hear about God. A lot of people talk about God, say, yeah, I know God. But you know what? The, the thing about God is that uh, when we give our life to Jesus, if, we give, if you know Jesus, if you know God, God does something that this world cannot do. It's something powerful. That uh, The gift of salvation is something that we cannot earn, or, earn on our own. You know, the gospel tells us that Jesus Christ, when he came down, amen, he came down to do something that no other person could do. He came to bear sin on himself, basically to, to, to bear the weight of sin. And so even out here sweating in the sun, I can still trust in the son, Jesus Christ, and know that, you know what, my sins are forgiven. And that's the good, the, the, the grace of God and the wonderful gift that we have that you can know today even when you give your life to, to Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you this this morning or this afternoon that uh, your sins can be forgiven because that is what Jesus Christ came to do away with on the cross. He came to give his life as a sacrifice for our sins. And I want to encourage you, you can know Jesus and you can have a relationship with him even right now, even, even today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so even... um. You know, even as we as we're standing here, if you're within the sound of my voice, I just want to tell you this uh, this afternoon that um, you know, it, it, us being here right now is, is not just happening. This is something that God has ordained. God has set up because it's an opportunity to hear something that's contrary to what you'll hear in the world. It's something that's contrary to what you'll hear on most of the media and the news and what's going on in the world. You know, some people are tucked away, afraid to open their doors. You know, uh, some people think that everyone hates everybody. And, and, and some people are just unwilling to open up their hearts because they shut people off and shut things off because they think that's the only way to survive today. But I'm here to tell you that the gospel opened us up. It opens us up to be hurt, but at the same time, it opens us up to receive the power and grace of God. And so the same very thing that we might run from and fight is the very thing that God is calling and compelling us to do. That means opening up ourselves and, and realizing that we are sinful people, that we have a sinful nature. The sin nature is what Jesus dealt with. He dealt with on the cross the very thing that makes us want to gravitate toward the wicked, bad things that we love to do. And if you were honest with yourself today, you'd say that I cannot do it on my own, just like I said it and I continue to say it over and over again. I can't do it on my own. But in Jesus Christ is the power of God working unto salvation, where God can deal with us where we are and change our situation and change our minds and change our thoughts and change our hearts about the matters of life. And I want to tell you this morning, this afternoon, that God can do that. I'm not here talking something that I haven't experienced. I've experienced it 12, 13 years ago, and I'm experiencing it even today. And I can tell you that you can have it in your life. Maybe if you've turned away from God, maybe you, 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 you've done wickedly and you consider yourself you can't be forgiven. That is a lie from the pit of hell. There is grace and hope in the cross of Jesus Christ. There is love and forgiveness and mercy in what God has did. Jesus Christ did not come for the righteous. He came for the sinners like you and I. And I just want to tell you this afternoon that, you know what, that's not a small thing. Us being here is not a small thing. God made us for something very important. And I want to tell you that you can know your purpose in life. In Jesus' name. God 
Anybody who can hear me, anybody within the sound of my voice, within this uh, San Diego sunny day, man, it's a beautiful day. Uh, we want to just uh, share a message of hope. Uh, we want to let you know that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came down to earth and took our sins upon the cross. He died for your sin and my sin. And uh, above all, the most important thing we want to share with you today is that you are forgiven in Christ and that God loves you and that God has prepared a, a place for you in heaven. We know that the, that the world is going crazy today. Uh, amen. That uh, the, the world is uh, looking for answers, looking for uh, answers in the wrong places. But in, in reality, the, the only answer to all the insanity that's going on is, uh, is Jesus Christ uh, crucified for our sin. Because there is no one good, there is no righteous, says the Bible. The word of God says there is no one good, that we all fall short of the glory of God. Uh, us ourselves, uh, as, as, a, as believers in Christ, we are sinners. We were on our way to hell, but Jesus Christ died for our sin and we have received them and we are forgiven. And we invite you out to receive Jesus Christ, that you might be forgiven as well, that we might see you in heaven. Uh, and, uh, that, and just want to let you know that God loves you and he has a place for you in heaven. Because in the end, uh, nothing really matters. No, no money can, uh, well, no, you will not take any money with you once you die. You will not take any car, anything that, uh, that is here in this earth. And uh, we will all be standing before God in heaven. 
And the only thing that will matter is that you receive Jesus Christ. That you receive the, the gospel, the, the news that we share with you today. Did you receive it? So we encourage you. We want to challenge you to receive Jesus Christ yes. today and be forgiven. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen.
has happened. I've seen husbands watch their families walk out the door and make no change in their life. And the scary thing about that is you can live your life as you, as you always have. And one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be in hell. You're going to continue living your life ignoring the sign that Jesus is coming back very soon. And you're going to continue walking down this path. And the Bible says that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. You won't know when he's coming. And the church will be gone and you will be left behind. And God will pour out his wrath. And that is why right now the Bible says you call people to repent. You tell them today is the day of salvation. Christ is reaching out to you. If you will repent today, Christ will save you. You cannot continue to ignore what is going on around you. Christ is making it very clear that He is coming back and that this world is lost and on its way to hell. The values of this world, the system of this world, the cares of this world are going to drag you to hell. But Christ says, I came and I died that you might have life and life more abundantly. You've got to surrender your life to Jesus. You have to stop living like Jesus is not coming back. Because he's coming back very soon. I challenge you to come out here and surrender your life to Jesus. If you're in your home listening, I want you to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I understand you took my place and I believe you rose from the grave on the third day. Come into my heart as my Lord and Savior God. Help me to change the way I live. Help me to see you for who you are, the one true God. I surrender to you, Lord. Listen, if you said that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, welcome to the family of God. Come to church tomorrow. We are at 750 Buyer Way right next to giant pizza you come and let god do a work in your heart god bless you we got some more music for you
Yes, he is. Let him be your answer, amen, today. As you hear the gospel, as you hear the good news that we brought to you. Jesus and the good news is the answer to your problems, to anything that you're going through. Maybe it's depression, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's addiction, maybe it's shame. But Jesus is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And through him, you can come to the narrow side and come to the Father. And just come to the Father and be set free from any bondage, any addiction, any suffering, any pain. Jesus is a healer. Amen. But above all, that you can be set free from your sin, from the power of sin, which is death. Tell you. 
It's too loud. Everything. Just the decimal, so the decimal level. I turned the main down. So this next track that was is a good a, song, huh? That last one. You know, a, a lot from the enemy. Oh. A lot from the enemy is that. One thing you yeah. look at when they teach in school evolution, trying to teach that we came from monkeys or a rock or whatever nonsense it is now, trying to teach us basically, all that comes in to, to the yeah. point yeah. To, prove to, to prove to us in our, in our thoughts, and even at the youngest age, as, you know, as being so impressionable as children, is that we came from nothing. So if we came from nothing, nothing really matters. Yeah. You know, and so when we, when, when we have that mindset, we, it changes our perspective of what life and living is. You know, because if, if I came from nothing, then my life doesn't really count for anything because I'm, I'm not here for a purpose or for a reason. And, you know, some 20, well, not 20, but when I was in my, my youth, um, you know, that, that, that mindset was something that, 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 that plagued me because I didn't really understand what my purpose was and what purpose really, really is. And, and, and it took God coming and revealing to me, one, first off, making, making me to understand that, that he's, he, he's true, he's known, that God is knowable. God is not so separated from humanity that we can only hear and read about him in stories or, 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 or by, you know, the really holy people that can speak to us that can only know him. But no, God is very personable because God came down in the form of a man. Jesus Christ, the living word. And so uh, something this song inspired me is just um, t talking about is that God is, he's real. He's knowable, he's searchable. And that we do have a purpose and a reason in life. And it's like a switch in our, in our lives that once you get this, your perspective on things can change entirely. But it's something only God can do. God can reveal to you in your life. He did it in my life. And he took me from suicidal tendencies and, and, and massive depression and bouts of anxiety. And he put me at, at peace. And that, you know, that, that's the character of God. He's, he's the prince of peace. And so especially now, 
all the things that we see around us, that there is a Prince of Peace that can provide a way and a hope and change your perspective on who you are and what your purpose in life is. So this song, amen, it actually is taken from uh, Lincoln Park. But, the, but as we redid the lyrics, we have hope in Jesus Christ. We have a purpose and a reason in Him. It's called uh, In the End. don't know why. Doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind. I designed this rhyme to explain in God's time. Time is a valuable thing. Watch the truth spread and the fruit that it brings. Watch the sin fade and the spirit invade. It's the blood that prevails. Look up and not below. Dodge that trap though and trust that God knows. Stop holding on to what you didn't know. Please be still just a don't hold all the hate inside. Yeah. Lust, strife, and pride will tear your life apart. And what it meant to be will eventually be a memory of a time when. Don't know why. Doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind. I designed this rhyme to explain in God's time. In spite of the way sin was mocking me, acting right because I'm part of God's property. Remembering all the times that you fought with me, I'm surprised it got so far. Things aren't the way they were before. You wouldn't even recognize me anymore. Not that you knew me pre sin, but it all comes back to me. Don't hide all the hate inside. Lust, strife, and pride will tear your life apart. And what it meant to be will eventually be a memory of a time I when. of you that are within yeah. the sound of my voice, uh, yeah. you know, I uh, have a little uh, so little bit of a testimony to yes, give, we are, although we set up for our next song. Uh, you know, I was a kid who grew up in church, uh, grew too up low, Christian nobody can hear beliefs it. and all that. They raised me up in church, and I thank God for that, because they put that in my heart, and at a very young age, I understood what, what needed to be done. Uh, <clears throat> fast forward to... 
to say maybe a year ago, you know, I lost, I lost my conviction. I, I, uh, I lost. I guess you can say I lost my desire to be right with Jesus, and I wanted to get a little taste of the world because I never actually full on left the church, left uh, the ways of the Lord. I never, you know, completely. I mean, in my high school years, I was a little bit on and off, but a year ago, I never really cut myself off from Jesus completely and let me just say you know as a person who's tested both worlds inside of Jesus and outside I would prefer I would choose Jesus every single time because yes there was pleasure yes I, I did have fun I never really got into drugs or anything but you know it was mainly just going on from girl to girl and I, and I was seeking happiness in that and you know, many men today, they, they can say and they can lie to themselves all they want that, you know, women is enough. But if that were true, why is it that they keep on searching for another one and another one and another one and another one? And that's what sin does. It takes you deeper than you're willing to go. It keeps you longer than you're willing to stay. And it costs more than we're willing to pay. And I learned that the hard way. So to anybody, you know, that's around my age, I'm 21 years old. Anybody that's in their early teens or early 20s, you know, if you're a guy, and you know, it's a very strong temptation and we can lie to ourselves and say that, well, if I have a girlfriend, then I'll be happy. That's a lie, I've tried that, and all it's ever done is bring more problems than it did solve them. And you know, I can truly say with all my heart and believe that Jesus, there is truly no one that satisfies more than Jesus because we were created with that desire to have that relationship with God, whether we admit it or not. And if we're truly honest with ourselves, and if you really stop and think and sit down and really ponder on it, why are we here? Atheists can believe all they want and say we're an accident. I choose to believe that I was created, I was handcrafted by an intelligent being who is God. You know, there is nothing better than the faith in Jesus Christ. And I, and I can confidently say that after this life, there will be a better one. And in this afternoon, that's what we're inviting you to, to accept. Jesus came many years ago to die for your sins. We didn't deserve it. Our sin is what placed him on that cross. And in this afternoon, we're inviting you that you take that decision, really pondering it. Why are we here? Do you ever wonder where we're going to go after this life? You know, you don't lose anything with trying Jesus. Many people say, well, what if he's not real? Well, I'll tell you this, if I do die and God was made up or whatnot, I didn't lose anything. But if anything that the gospel has, I mean, if anything that the gospel said has an ounce of truth, then we have a lot at stake. And why play that risk? Why play with eternity? Take that opportunity now that we're here. Accept Jesus Christ into your heart. God bless you. And this is our last, well, last scheduled song we were going to do, but uh, the song is called Come All You Weary. I really want to just really hear like the, the, the amen, the point of, of what we're here today for is, is to win you to the Lord. And that just means, you know, to, to really, uh, that you make a decision with, with all these testimonies, all these things that are being said from, um, from our lives in connection to, to, to God through the gospel. That, you know what, God has a place for you in his kingdom, in, 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 his, in his church. God has a place for you. And God is, is calling you all to make a decision this afternoon. And so this song is, is kind of built around that. And it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the invitation of Jesus that says, come all that are heavy laden. And it says, you can find rest for your souls. And so this song is called, Come All You Weary. Church, not a couple of alone. 
while you're weary, cripples and lakes. Help you with all you can make, down you can. Not a way to go, or travel as friends. Lights grow and bright. Rest for your soul So are you willing to gather around near me So are you Hey man, this uh, afternoon, you know, a lot of things were said. You know, and like I said, even right now before we did that song was to bring us all, bring, if you're in the sound of my voice, to bring you to a decision. You know, the most important decision that I've ever made in my life. And those who are here and already who made that decision for Christ that they've made in their lives as well, is to choose that God is better, that God is true. I think telling people they're gonna end up He is without fault, <laughs> he's holy, and he's he's worthy of our surrender, he's worthy never, of our of our lives. Never. You know, I've heard it said in many you know, Christian circles, if God didn't do anything else, just the fact he saved me is enough. Because to make that decision is really to come to understand and recognize what what sin is you know God presents us he, he shows us on the cross what the cost of sin is and what he had to pay it's like it's almost like you know living in whatever the most expensive place you can think about here maybe we're in La Jolla you got a, you got a mansion you know everything's paid for all expenses you know you never have to ask about anything financial in your life and you know and then 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 you know someone coming and taking and showing you the price of it you know this is this house right here is two million dollars. Your your bills are about ten thousand a month, and all these different things. He's like, and all these things being presented to you. The food you eat, that's yeah, about five hundred a month. You know, uh, paying for your clothes, paying for all these things, and then saying, you know what? That's how much it costs to, to be able to take care of you. Well, I know those that, those might seem like big numbers to us today, but that doesn't compare to the cost of sin because it doesn't compare because of what Jesus had to give. He had to pour his blood out. And there's nothing that compares to what Jesus did for us. Even if we had, like I said, the greatest of the greatest things on this earth, it doesn't compare to the sacrifice Jesus made for us. And so this afternoon, you know, if you're within the sound of my voice, I, I want to encourage you to make that decision for Christ. Because our sin is what caused that for God. God so loved the world. You, know, you heard that scripture, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus came down because of the sin problem of humanity. My sin and your sin. And so when he came, he came because he came to pay it. He came to foot the bill. And so this afternoon, um, I'd like to pray with you if you can hear me. Perhaps maybe you're nervous about coming now. Maybe you want to keep social distancing. Maybe, you know... But you can hear the sound of my voice and you'd say, God, I believe this. I believe that what you're saying 
uh, Brother Michael, is true. Then the Bible says, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Now, I'd like to pray with you this afternoon. If you believe me, say, Father God, I know that you are real. I know that I have sinned and that my sins are deserving of death. But I know you are gracious and I know that you came and paid for me. God, forgive me of my sins and give me a new life in you. In Jesus' name. Thir 13, almost 12 years ago, it was presented to me the very thing I present to you this afternoon. And you know what? I, uh, this, there wasn't necessarily that everything stopped and I had this surreal moment, but from that moment, my life changed. And if, if you're behind the wall somewhere hearing what I'm saying, and maybe you've prayed that in your heart, pray that openly in your room. If you believe that, your life has changed. And that's not something that you and I can do. It's only something that God can do, but we welcome God to do it. That's what faith is. We're welcoming God. We're trusting God's nature and character, and we're believing in it, and we're trusting him to do what he says he's going to do. And so I'm trusting God with you, that God will do a powerful thing in your life if you believed and if you prayed, even during the time of this concert, that God will draw you, God will direct you, God will heal you where you need to be healed. And I want to encourage you this afternoon that we have service in this building, in this in the shopping center, 750 Byway, next to the giant pizza place. But God's cooking up something better than a pizza. I'm telling you, God has grace and mercy for you and me. And I want to encourage you to come at 10 in the morning as our service starts. And we'd love to have you come. Even as we're sitting down, if we're still here, come and talk to us. we love to talk to you about what God is doing, what God can do, and encourage you in the Lord. Thank you so much this afternoon. Do one song.
down this afternoon. What can make us the sound of my voice, you can touch, God can touch your life. God can heal you. God can set you free. sick and you know and when I really came to realize like how uh, how serious it could have been for me it was it's like it was literally life or death life or death and I, and I and I just feel God wants me to say this afternoon some of you are someone's out here listening is that the decision you're gonna make or God is compelling you to make is a life or death decision that's right that you might find your, you might not find yourself with this opportunity again where the grace of God is moving over your life and God is helping you and showing you. And, and, and even, you know, even if it's painful, God's doing that to heal your heart. You know, I, I was going through a lot of pain, but now that I'm out of it, I realize, you know what, pain is for a reason. It shows us that there's a problem. And so as God is revealing your problems, don't hold on to the problems, release it to God. You know, that song we sing, Come All You Weary, God says, come all who are heavy laden and you'll find rest for your souls. The burdens of life and of sin, God came to relieve. And I really feel God wants someone out here to hear that and understand that even though pains might be a persistent problem right now, but the glory of God, uh, the, the, the grace of God, is God allowing you to come to him and release it into his into his into him to, to let God have that burden and for God to relieve it and take that from you. And I want to encourage you just to make the decision. You know, I'm not pulling pulling arm, God is speaking to you. God wants you to turn to him and trust him. Amen. So we're gonna close close off this uh, afternoon. Once again, I um, we have service tomorrow at this building at the, the, in the corner, 750 Byer Way, amen, next to the uh, giant pizza pizza shop, amen. Um, our service starts at 10 o'clock. Our building opens at 9. God bless you all, and, and just hope to see you tomorrow.